you are listening to Transformation at Work, your one-stop guide to Salesforce success. And this is Salesforce Tech Talks, comprehensive deep dives into the art of solutioning and implementation for Salesforce. Our expert squad of developers, solution architects, and industry veterans are breaking open the black box and digging into the possibilities of solution design and architecture. The show is brought to you by Jarrett, a summit-level Salesforce consulting and implementation partner and solutions provider, and I am Jeff Stormer, your host as always. In this episode, we're discussing the automotive industry, specifically the big question of how can dealerships set up employees for success when it comes to making exceptional experiences for the customer. After all, that kind of personalization, which increasingly is the key to success for any dealership, really starts at that employee level. And honestly, a good number of employees want to be taking that time and giving that kind of experience to customers because ultimately that's what grows the business, that's what drives profits, and that's the sign of a good job. But there's one big problem that keeps employees from feeling truly enabled to succeed. Or more accurately, one small problem that they then have to repeat again and again and again and again and you get the idea. Any single time you talk to an employee about the things they hate doing the most, it's usually those repetitive tasks that really bring them down and waste time. And those repetitive manual tasks Uh, are also the same ones that customers hate waiting for. That's Jenny Thompson, Jaren's automotive practice lead who brings over 24 years of automotive experience to her current role. I would agree with that, Jenny. Uh, I even take it a little higher level. Uh, The end goal of the process automation is uh, we want to increase customer satisfaction. And that's Brian Schumacher, president of ResultsGuru.com, who has worked with Harley-Davidson Canada's network performance team for the past 15 years, on top of an over 40-year career in business and technical consulting within the automotive industry. And in the big picture of things, customer satisfaction really determines uh, the goodwill of the firm, basically, of the dealership, which at the end of the day, that results in, you know, the valuation of your um you know, your market share, your brand strength, all of those good things. So every time employees waste time in processes, we diminish the values of a customer satisfaction, which diminishes the value of the dealership. We sat down with Brian and Jenny to discuss these frustrating, repetitive daily tasks. And when left unmanaged, the frustrating toll that they can take on both employee and customer experience. And as Brian points out here, it's not just that it leads to a less satisfying interaction. In many cases, these sorts of time-consuming tasks can often send employees packing to the hills for better opportunities. Here's Brian. You know, one of the benchmarks for truly enabled employees, I'm I'm looking at skill levels and and long-term employee satisfaction and and the fact that I have long-term employees uh, that means low turnover, means happier, more engaged staff, and which all relates to what I always come back to again is customer satisfaction, the CXI, the the overall net promoter score that uh, all the dealerships get. That's that's a big benchmark. That's the one I go by. Yeah, you know, I think that that employee turnover is something I heard at NADA talked a lot about. You know, both from like this, like forty to forty seven percent of staff turns over on an annual basis. Uh, For sales, it's 80%. For female sales, it's 90%. And, you know, when you think about enabling uh, employees, um, if you have those kind of turnover rates, you really are going to have to work hard to retain your employees, ensure that you have a career path for them to be satisfied, to be able to reach their maximum potential. So it's pretty clear that businesses need better tools to automate and streamline those repetitive daily tasks for the sake of both customers and employees alike. But when you look at how they're currently handling those automations, it, well, it leaves a lot to be desired. Here's how Jenny puts it. Workarounds are a huge red flag in my mind that something is up. When I think when a system is working really well, they're actually not talking about the system and they're also not calling support. And they're also not complaining to each other because it's actually supporting the way they work. I think that that's that's really important. And another thing I think is that they aren't constantly designing workarounds. Well, the biggest workaround I see, Jenny, is 
people using spreadsheets to uh, support the gaps in the, uh, the your application. Say we're scheduling deliveries of new sales. And you wouldn't believe how I'll walk into dealerships and they'll either have a spreadsheet to manage all this or they'll have a, a, a whiteboard up there on on the wall where somebody's diligently updating it all the time as things move through the process. Where's the screen? You know, like you can see it when you walk into McDonald's. They take your order at the counter and guess what? The cooks are already got it in, in the boxes. Well, why is that not happening in the dealership? And that's the type of thing. And I, I always measure um, the effectiveness of a process by asking them about, you know, have you got some sort of a spreadsheet where you're managing this? And they proudly show me this great spreadsheet and it's very elaborate. And they've even built all these formulas into this. Problem number one is as soon as that person moves on to some other opportunity in life, right? That wonderful spreadsheet is part of the system and there's no turnover. And then we get new new people in that place. And the, the now your process has just fallen apart. So why is that not embedded in the application? Which brings us to Salesforce Automotive Cloud, which embeds a lot of those processes within a single platform to truly automate repetitive tasks and give employees that time and capacity back that they can then use instead to focus on the customer. Here's Jenny. Automotive Cloud is just this perfect blend of uh, having all the functionality built into it. But honestly, here is the platform that enables you. And now let's customize it. Um, easily through the user interface to be able to design those workflows that match uh, exactly what that dealership is looking for. You know, from from that perspective, it it definitely gives you you know the ability to customize your sales stages or your customer path. It it connects all the dots in between sales and service and yeah you know, F and I and you know whatnot and it, it enable and parts and general merchandise and it enables you to have notifications pop up. Uh, to tell you about an event that's occurring or to give you an expect action. You know, there's a lot of functionality in the platform that would be totally amazing for both employee enablement and, um, and customer satisfaction. But of course, technology is only half of the equation. For Automotive Cloud to truly be successful in transforming these processes, team leaders need to be willing to work with their people to both bring employees on board and to get their feedback meaningfully integrated into the implementation. Yes, uh, after many, many years of uh, work involved in developing many different applications, uh, it comes always down to uh, ownership of the process. The dealership uh, really has to get uh, involved in the solution design process. That's the number one thing. And then by that, I mean they have to understand and clearly document the key dealership processes being automated. They have to determine the objectives and goals for the change and how they're going to measure success, too. And then they've got to be involved in that development, design, and approval process, which means right down to seeing the user interface and making sure that it's practical to use and easy to use. And and further, it's while the while the application is being developed, as uh, the different uh, drops are made of, of the of the code that we can actually see user interface, it's participating in testing and reviewing the results before implementation. This is just fundamental to make sure that this thing is going to work, and even getting staff engaged with reviewing that too. And then ensuring that there's a proper rollout plan and training plan uh, created and then monitoring that rollout and determining if the success objectives have been achieved. Like it's it's basic common sense, what I call ownership. If you just leave it to the developers to go off and come back with something, I guess you shouldn't be surprised if you're disappointed. Absolutely true. That is so true. You know, one of the things I hear talking with uh, different types of dealers is that, you know, they are really looking for a platform that will give them the flexibility to customize it to their best practices. I mean, a lot of the uh, different types of 
dealers have like excellent training classes and different things to be able to help enable their employees, but it doesn't necessarily translate into the use of the of the software, being able to then take that training and morph it over to having the software support those best practices. But there's also regional differences, you know, in between countries and between states and between provinces, in between counties, like there's regional differences that that would really mean that you want to kind of tailor make your your customer path and your workflows um, to be able to, to do that and also measure the success of your staff and your customer satisfaction to that. Um, And, you know, I know from that perspective, change management is a, is a really big thing when it comes to software to make sure that as it's being rolled out, that people are really being enabled on the platform um, and, and supported in their enablement. And once that process is defined and the technology is deployed, then it becomes time to measure it. And for that teams need clear benchmarks to ensure they're hitting their progress goals and that the transformation efforts are ultimately successful. From a software perspective, when I'm going through a project, you know, we're establishing some KPIs prior to the beginning of the project. And we're establishing some semblance of, you know, ROI on the investment that they've done. And so post-project as things are running and, uh, you know, no longer are we doing an implementation, but they're actually using Salesforce to manage their sales processes, et cetera. It's really that measurement, the measurements against the original KPIs, return on investment, you would expect like the KPIs would result in a certain percentage of sales increase, a certain percentage of customer satisfaction, a certain uh, percentage decrease in employee turnover. And of course, um, you need adoption in order for that to happen. So, you know, I look for adoption. Obviously, if you don't have adoption, then that has to be addressed before you're going to see any kind of return on investment. Those are the things that, that I look for personally. That it comes down to the two aspects of qualitative and quantitative measures. The uh, the quantitative, the KPIs, yes, if you can measure them, that's great. And those are the things like uh, the CSI scores, uh, net promoter score. Uh, do we have increase in sales, right? Um, we can actually look at like an employee satisfaction survey and that, uh, that you know, gives us a measure. But uh, we also have to look at those things like, okay, people are not wasting time building spreadsheets anymore and the data is available and they're happier and they get their job done. And guess what? Happier cut, happy, happier staff members stay longer, right? And we have less employee turnover, less cost of training for new people and fewer instances where we actually have a complete system fall apart on us. Now, all of that is no small feat, right? It's a tremendous amount of work. It's a serious investment. But when you look at the impact that that can have on both dealership employees and their customers, well, the results are pretty profound. Exactly. And that brings us back to that whole concept of the the value of the dealership, right? When you go and and uh, negotiate with somebody who's looking to finally buy your dealership, you're at that point, You're at, guess what? The valuation is going to be based on goodwill, which is determined by net promoter score, which is determined by your your customer values. These are That's the goodwill. That's the premium that anyone will pay. Rather than just paying for your customer list and X number of times sales or X number of times bottom line, the goodwill factor is the fact. It's what you've actually built up over years of keeping those customers satisfied very well. And when you look at that kind of impact, with employees able to use their time to create better experiences for the customer and customers feeling more loyal and supportive of their dealerships leading to these long-term profitable interactions, well, that's transformation at work. has been transformation at work thank you for listening and thank you once again to brian and jenny for your incredible insights throughout the conversation transformation at work is as always produced by jaren in collaboration with salesforce i am jeff stormer your host and producer if you enjoyed the show consider leaving us a five-star review on itunes or spotify or head to jaren.com to sign up for email updates when we release new episodes until next time thank you again for listening and we hope to see you again soon